अस्सलाम वालेकुम फ्रेंड्स कैसे हैं आप सब लोग आई होप आप सब लोग बिल्कुल ठीक हैं वेलकम टू वी लॉजी बाय अतिया शौर इस वीडियो में हम लोग अपनी स्टडीज को कंटिन्यू करेंगे अपनी जो हमारी स्टडीज हैं बीटी 10 इकोलॉजी बाय डिवर्सिटी में वर्ल्ड स्टडी 1 इस पर टॉपिक हम कर रहे हैं इसको हम कंटिन्यू करेंगे हम हम हैं टॉपिक नंबर 50 पर लेक्चर 50 इसका नाम है हैबिटेट फ्रैगमेंटेशन इसको पढ़ लेते हैं इसका कुछ ले लेते हैं सबसे पहले हीट इज रेडिएटेड इनटू स्पेस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इंफ्रारेड रेडिएशन व्हिच इज नॉट ट्रू फॉर अ बायोम comprised of single species hmm. organisms convert light energy to heat sulfur oxidizer and reduces are examples of chemo autotrophs करेक्ट एंड स्लोड चलते हैं आगे इसी वीडियो को अच्छा सुन लेते हैं we have discussed about uh, different features of habitat and we know that habitat is a sensitive body which involves different kind of uh, factors including biotic factors and abiotic factors for its proper functioning and this habitat it must be an intact body for its proper functioning and uh, the existence and survival of its population and the least interference is required to protect those animal populations which are living in that habitat so there are certain species which have a very narrow tolerance range and they can't uh, tolerate the changes beyond the limits of uh, these factors or the beyond the limits of their tolerance so any kind of uh, slight changes sometimes it would be disastrous for certain species for example insects they have uh, a narrow range and they have a narrow range of uh, um, tolerance as well in habitat fragmentation due to certain activities which could be natural which would be uh, man made activities uh, a part of uh, a habitat or a patch of a habitat is broken down into several small patches and these uh, fragmentation of that patch of habitat into smaller fragments it results in reduction of total area of the habitat because it is uh, breaking the larger area into the smaller uh, smaller parts or smaller patches so it results in isolation of one habitat fragment from the other part or the other fragment of the habitat and it results a decrease in the average size of each patch of the habitat so in habitat fragmentation there are certain causes which are dividing or the breaking up this one large patch into the smaller patches and these causes are there could be different kind of obstructions and these obstructions could be natural for example the volcanic eruption that could be one obstruction bush fire which is naturally happening climate change could be a barrier to deforestation here in this image we, uh, we could see the deforestation and we have talked about deforestation previously as well so we can see that that this patch of uh, a habitat it is divided into smaller patches like this is the part of our uh, patch of a forest and this is a patch of a forest so all these two patches they are at a distances from each other so that they are isolated from each other and they don't have any connection of forest between them other than deforestation colonies human housing could be the one obstruction the roads is an other obstruction so we could see there is a road in the middle of uh, this forest so it is dividing this one habitat into two patches and there could be the water drains noise could be the one obstruction as well and then mining is also dividing one habitat into multiple fragments so because of fragmentation one population is divided into unconnected patches and it affects the types of species or the biodiversity and the population size in that habitat here we could see in this video the different causes of the habitat fragmentation and its impacts on the habitat function forests cover about 30% of the planet and the ecosystems they create play an essential role in supporting life on earth the deforestation is clearing earth's forests on a massive scale and at the current rate of destruction the world's rainforests could completely disappear within 100 years why should we care about deforestation together forestry and agriculture are responsible for 24% of greenhouse gas emissions making deforestation a significant contributor to climate change deforestation impacts the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere in two ways first when trees are felled they release the carbon they are storing into the atmosphere second trees play a critical role in absorbing the greenhouse gases that fuel global warming fewer forests mean larger amounts of greenhouse gases entering the atmosphere and increase speed and severity of global warming in addition to helping regulate the earth's climate forests provide habitats for over 80% of the plants and animals that live on land But deforestation destroys these habitats, diminishing biodiversity. Some estimate that 4 to 6,000 rainforest species go extinct each year. This also affects the more than 2 billion people who rely on forests as sources of food and shelter. The biggest driver of deforestation is agriculture. Farmers chop down trees in order to plant crops like soybeans, palm trees, and cocoa, or to make room to raise livestock for beef. Logging operations, which provide the world's wood and paper products, also cut countless trees each year. Forests are also destroyed as a result of growing urban sprawl as land is developed for dwellings. The effects of deforestation are grave, but not irreversible. 
Efforts such as managing forest resources, eliminating clear cutting, and planting new trees to replace those removed are already being made to reduce deforestation's environmental impact on our planet. And while some plant and animal species are gone forever, combating deforestation can help prevent further loss of biodiversity. So in this video, we studied the different types, different causes of habitat fragmentation and its effects on the different populations. Uh, so once one habitat is divided into different batches, it appears the proportion of a habitat that occurs on the boundary or the edges of uh, that patch it increases, which means that on the edges there would be a more exposure towards a totally different kind of environment. So the environment which is faced by the species which are present on the edges is, is different or they are more exposed towards the environment as compared to those which are living uh, in the interior of that patch which is facing a habitat fragmentation. So this phenomenon is called as edge effect. The edge effect it significantly de degrades the population survival which is existing on the edges or on the periphery of that habitat fragment because uh, the climate in at, on the edges of uh, the patch it is considered as the microclimate. The reason uh, why we call it a microclimate because it could have a subtle changes which are happening in the environment, so they will be directly influenced and quickly influenced by the changes in the environment. So other than uh, climatic factors or other than environmental factors, there are other factors too, which we'll discuss later. So in this image, we can see this is an example of a rainforest of uh, Manas, Brazil. So here we could see that this rain... forest is divided because of the deforestation it has faced the fragmentation in different patches so there is one patch and then there are other multiple patches so this is the edge of that fragment so the populations which are present on the edges of these patch they are facing different conditions as compared to those which are present in on the interior side of the forest so those which are present in the interior side of the forest they are more safe as compared to those which are present on edges so they are facing lesser fluctuations in environmental conditions they are facing lesser fluctuations in predation prey relationship or any other kind of interactions happening in that ecosystem as compared to those which are present on the edges so this is the edge effect which actually degrades the population size in one patch so the edge effect the populations on the edges are for example they are more exposed to the sunlight so they are uh, facing the trouble of uh, thermoregulation so that is the one thing the other thing is um there could be the thinning of forest as uh, the types of plant species which are present on edges they might not be suitable for the animal species living there there could be uh, more uh, parasitic effects, parasites and the predators, they can, they can be more harmful, they can be more dangerous on the edges of habitat as compared to those which are hidden in the interior of that fragment. Plants are considered the worst affected by uh, this habitat fragmentation because those animals which can move, they are mobile, they will migrate from the one patch, possibly migrate from one patch to the other patch or maybe from the edges to the interior of that fragment. But in cases of plants, because they are sedentary, they can't move, they will have to stay at the same place and they will have to face these harsh conditions. So uh, there are more chances of uh, elimination of plant species as compared to animal species as a result of habitat fragmentation. Reading Kalate, our habitat needs to be an intact body with least degree of with least degree of interference or protection of inhabitants. Many species are too sensitive to minute changes uh, or interference in their habitat. It can have drastic effects on their survival. Habitat fragmentation is the phenomena in which an intact habitat is divided into smaller patches or fragments. This fragmentation results in reduction of the total area available for the inhabitants and causes isolation. Fragmentation can be caused by different obstructions that is volcanism, fire, climate change, deforestation, urban development activities, colonies, rivers, water drains, etc. Noisy, noise and mining. As a result, the population is divided into small unconnected patches. It affects the biodiversity and population size in the fragmented habitat. The generated patches as the result of population is divided into small uh, sorry as a result of fragmentation have more area exposed to the outer environment than the inner portions or areas of the patch 
organisms living at the edges of the patch patch are more vulnerable to changes in the habitat and thus have much lower survival chances this phenomenon is called edge effect the edge effect is more dangerous than the fragmentation as the population are at the edges are more exposed to sunlight more exposed to sun exposed to sunlight and experience more predation and parasitism plant species are worst worsted worstly affected due to their lack of mobility in this lesson the student will learn about habit habitat fragmentation and edge effect वो सो सिंपल सो बहुत ही इजी है बट बहुत ज़्यादा सिंपल सिंपल बातें सिंपल रीड का आउट करने से ना बहुत समझ आ रही है तो थोड़ी बहुत थी वो वीडियो से आ गई अब चलते हैं आगे डैश प्रेजेंट डैश डैश प्रेजेंट स्पीशीज ऑफ मैमल्स एंड रेप्टाइल्स हैव बिकम एक्सटीन ड्यू टू हैबिटेट लॉस can not be found in air in gaseous state phosphate salts are released from rocks through So now we discuss about the effects of fragmentation, habitat fragmentation on biodiversity. The most um, uh, significant impact of habitat fragmentation is on the loss of biodiversity because both the plants, animals, microbes living in that habitat they will be directly affected by uh, this kind of fragmentation. So uh, because this is a fragmentation, it would reduce the chances of uh, uh, having a safe place, shelter. So they are breaking down into different patches. Their uh, shelter place or their area of uh, safety is being reduced. This is a one major threat for the organisms living there. Secondly, it is reducing the amount of uh, food resources available, increasing the competition of those populations which are still present in that fragment. So thus, it is increasing the chances of uh, their survival. So it might result in extinction of that population or maybe a reduction in fitness of those population. Genetic diversity is also fragmented. Because although uh, this uh, two different segments they might not be at a very large distances from each other, but for uh, the smaller organisms, for example insects or the microbes, it is not possible to move from the one patch to the other patch. Even sometimes for the large animals, it is not easy for them to move from the one patch, cross that barrier which is a plain land, and then reach the other um, the other patch of the habitat for interaction or for migration. Because once they are out of their patch or their fragment, they are very much exposed to harsh conditions of uh, environment, or they are more exposed to their predators. So they wouldn't pr prefer to move from one fragment to the other. They would prefer to stay in yeah within that fragment. 
So resultantly, because there is not interaction between two different patches or the multiple patches, so it would reduce the genetic diversity in that uh, in that fragment of the habitat. Because genetic diversity is losing because species are being lost, they are being extinct. Therefore, biodiversity or the types of species which are present in that fragment or in that area, it will reduce gradually. And this reduction might take many years. For example, um, uh, on, in the edge effect, we have seen that certain plant species, they might take uh, 17 years in rainforest for 50% of their elimination or extinction. So it is a slow process. Smaller populations, uh, they have uh, small pools of fitnesses, fitness maintaining alleles to survive. It means because we have a lesser uh, genetic diversity and we know each population has its gene pool, they have their specific genes and once they uh, breed with other uh, species or they, in, they breed with other population of same species, there would be uh, chances of increasing the fitness, which means they are bringing the heterozygosity and they are bringing different alleles which are improving their fitness to survive in that habitat. But in case when there is no breeding between different populations, uh, the fitness of alleles, uh, fitness maintaining alleles, they would be uh, start, they would start losing their uh, strength or their power and the chances of improvement will be reduced. Other effect of uh, fragmentation is um, reduced gene flow because animals are not migrating. They are not preferring to migrate, they are staying in within, the same uh, within the same fragment of the habitat as we have discussed before. So uh, there is a very slow rate of gene flow because um, during the process of migration, when animals are migrating from one place to the other, they are bringing their gene pool to the other population and the other population members are bringing their gene pool to that part of habitat. But in case of um, the habitat fragmentation, uh, migration rate is very much reduced. So therefore, gene pool is also reduced and the gene flow is reduced as well. It results in reproductive isolation of those population present in that fragment. So they will prefer only inbreeding. So not only those which are left within that fragment, they have uh, um, no other chance or opportunity except inbreeding. So inbreeding and the continuous inbreeding within the same fragment, within the same gene pool, it results in inbreeding depression. Inbreeding depression, it can be defined as increase um, of increasing the level of uh, homozygosity because we know during the process of uh, reproduction, uh, heterozygosity uh, is, is um, it, it comes in because of the process of crossing over and because of sharing the different genetic material between different individuals and a different population. But once there is inbreeding, same populations are uh, crossing with each other generation after generation. So there is a, a level of uh, homozygosity, it is increasing. So in that case, it is possible that those deleterious uh, alleles which are not showing their effect uh, initially, but with the passage of the time when there wouldn't be any heterozygosity, no, uh, no further or the better genes are coming in, resultantly these uh, dangerous alleles, they would start showing their presence in that population and it will make it further weak and which results in the local extinction of those species within that patch of habitat. Genetic drift is increased as a result of uh, habitat fragmentation. Genetic drift, obviously, because uh, our large habitat is uh, broken up into different fragments, so there is a genetic drift. There are the random changes to the genetic makeup of populations present in that habitat because now these populations are isolated within their fragments. So, uh, resultantly, rate of genetic drift is very high. And because of this high genetic drift, there will be reduction in genetic diversity. Another effect of uh, fragmentation is more pressure from the natural selection. We are familiar with the concept of natural selection of uh, Darwinism. So, during this theory, we know that the natural nature automatically selects the better adaptations. Or
for it selects those species which are adapting themselves according to the changing environment but in case of habitat fragmentation environment is suddenly or might be gradually changed so therefore uh, these species are not capable of adapting themselves to those uh, rapid or subtle changes in their environment so therefore these uh, small populations they are weak in their adaptations and because of being weak in having uh, that capacity of adaptations natural selection might choose to eliminate them from the productivity or from the biomass so that would be extinction it will lead to the extinction of species other than uh, these phenomena we have studied the different kind of uh, interspecific and intraspecific interactions uh, within uh, one ecosystem or maybe within the one um, uh, habitat as well so we uh, in case of a habitat fragmentation these interspecific interaction would be uh, remarkably affected for example in case of uh, predator prey dynamics we have seen that if uh, um, in because of the process of as a result of the uh, habitat fragmentation uh, there is an imbalance between the population of prey and predation so it would disturb the whole food web in that patch of habitat by changing the species diversity and their population uh, there might be a, a larger uh, size or of the population of prey and a smaller size of population of predators so resultantly there is more there are more prey and there are lesser predators there is a less pressure of predation on prey so the prey population size would increase and uh, resultantly they would consume their food resources more as compared to a natural or an intact environment so it would disturb the whole food web so therefore uh, this increase it, um, it may be uh, suitable it could uh, for the prey it might not be suitable for the prey both situations can exist that in the case of a smaller area prey would be safer um, as compared to the larger area because of the lesser number of predators but it can be opposite there might be an imbalance larger number of predators and smaller number of prey so the predators they would eliminate the prey the other reason is the edge effect which would uh, disturb these interspecific interactions because we said that prey predator attack and the parasite attack it would be um, more uh, significant on the edges of uh, that habitat fragment as compared to the interior of the fragment so all these effects of the habitat fragmentation they result in loss of uh, biodiversity loss of the habitat and this fragmentation which is caused by mostly caused by the human activity is extremely dangerous for the balance in any ecosystem so friends hamara uh, video complete ho gayi hai hum chalte hain apni reading ki taraf
सो माता चिपड़ी आ गई हम इसको पढ़ लेते हैं इफेक्ट्स ऑफ हैबिटल फर्मेंटेशन लॉस ऑफ बायोडाइवर्सिटी थ्रेटनिंग और एक्सटिंक्शन ऑफ द स्पीशीज जेनेटिक डाइवर्सिटी इज आल्सो फ्रेगमेंटेड स्मॉल पॉपुलेशंस हैव स्मॉलर पूल्स ऑफ फिटनेस मेंटेनिंग एलिस टू सरवाइव इफेक्ट्स ऑफ फ्रेगमेंटेशन जीन फ्लो एंड जीन फ्लो एंड migration are reduced species do not migrate to fragments reproductive isolation and inbreeding it causes inbreeding depression effects of fragmentation inbreeding increases the level of homozygosity facilitating the expression of deleterious alleles that reduce the fitness it may result in local extinction genetic drift is increased random changes to the genetic makeup of populations it leads to reductions in genetic diversity natural selection prefers large population size small population are weak and adaptations may be eliminated by the process of natural selection effects of fragmentation greatly affect the predator prey dynamics of many species by changing species diversity in population size reduction in area of safe zones for prey making them vulnerable to predators it may increase their area of refuge on opposite okay done ab iske sath sara post assessment ka step last step aa jata hai isko le lete hain If 90% area is cleared, dash person species are lost. 50. Dash cannot be found in air in gaseous state. Pass or us. Dash deforestation is responsible for 20% of what greenhouse gas emissions. just like humans animals they also like to expand their colonies and during this process uh, what they actually do they it is a natural uh, process and the one species it expands its geographical range gradually with the passage of the time by utilizing different means and ways 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल प्लांट्स जो है वो बहुत ज्यादा प्रेफर करती है की उनकी जो मोस्टली डिपेंडेंट है डिपेंडेंट अपन देर पोलिनेशन एंड सीड डिस्पर्स सो विद हेल्प ऑफ पोलिनेटर्स उनके सीड्स उनके फ्लावर से या उनका पॉइंट ऑफ लोकेशन से डिस्पर्स होते हुए किसी भी दूसरे हेबिटेट तक पहुंचते हैं वहां से वो फिर वो स्टार्ट ग्रोइंग दो प्लांट स्पीशीज एंड वन से फ्लावरिंग उनके सीड्स और उनके पोल वहां से फिर किसी अगले हेबिटेट में ट्रांसफर हो जाते हैं तो इसलिए वो पॉइंट ऑफ रीजन जहां से कोई भी स्पीशी ऑरिजिनेट होती है विद पैसेज ऑफ द टाइम इट वुड क्लोनाइज इट वुड इट सेल्फ और इट वुड एक्सपेंड इट्स रेंज ऑफ क्लोनाइजेशन सो दिस इज अचुरल प्रोसेस बोथ एनिमल्स एंड प्लांट्स दे आर फॉलोइंग दिस प्रोसेस एंड दट अदर प्रेशर टू बिकॉज इफ द पॉपुलेशन इज इंक्रीजिंग एट वन पॉइंट किसी एक पॉइंट के ऊपर वो रिसोर्स जो है वो उनको सस्टेन करने के लिए काफी नहीं रहते एनिमल्स हैव टू माइग्रेट फ्रॉम वन पॉइंट टू द अदर पॉइंट सो दिस इज कॉल्ड द प्रोस ऑफ क्लोनाइजेशन और इस क्लोनाइजेशन में और जो फैक्टर्स है फॉर एक्जाम्पल लोरिंग ऑफ सी लेवल्स ड्यू टू सर्टन रीजन और उस सी लेवल के नीचे होने की वजह से दो पार्ट्स जो है लैंड के विच आर नॉट कनेक्टेड टू इच अदर बिकॉज वॉटर जो था उनके बीच में एक बैरियर था सो वन दट सी लेवल इज रिड्यूस दे वुड बी अ ब्रिज और दे वुड बी अ नेक ऑफ कनेक्शन बिटवीन टू लैंड मासेस और एनिमल्स उस ब्रिज को यूटिलाइज करते हुए एक लैंड से दूसरे लैंड तक मूव कर सकते हैं इसके अलावा माइग्रेशन जो है दट इज एन अदर फैक्टर माइग्रेटरी एनिमल्स खुद तो मूव करते ही है सो दे मूव फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अदर प्लेस एक्सपेंडिंग देर रेंज देर एक्सपेंडिंग देर हैबिटेट बट एट सेम टाइम दे माइट कैरी अदर एनिमल्स टू फॉर एक्जाम्पल दे मे कैरी सर्टन सिम्बियोटिक सिम्बियॉन्ड्स और दे मे कैरी सर्टन पैरासाइट एंडो पैरासाइट एक्टो पैरासाइट या कोई और ऐसा ऑर्गेनिजम या सीड्स जो है जो उनकी स्किन के साथ या उनके फर के साथ अटैच हो तो उनकी डिस्पर्सल और उनकी क्लोनाइजेशन जो है उसमें भी उसको हेल्प आउट करते हैं इन सारे नेचुरल फैक्टर्स के साथ साथ सबसे जो रिमार्केबल रोल प्ले कर रहा है इस क्लोनाइजेशन के प्रोसेस में दट इज ह्यूमन सो दट अगेन द ह्यूमन इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द ब्रिंगिंग इम बैलेंस इन वन हैबिटेट so human activities are responsible for invasion of species from one habitat to other habitat so once these species are introduced they are called as uh, exotic species or introduced species they don't belong to that new habitat because they are coming from an other habitat uh, so they are totally new they arrive there because of human activity they arrive there because of natural process of colonization they once jab exotic species us habitat mein pahunch jati hai to wo do tarah ki situations face kar sakti hai one could be harsh and other could be favorable so in harsh conditions because they are uh, very new दे आर इन डिफरेंट रेंज ऑफ फिजिकल फैक्टर वहां का टेम्परेचर वेरी कर सकते हैं वहां पर वाटर लेवल जो है मॉइस्चर की कॉन्टेंट है वो उसके लिए वेरी कर सकते हैं तो इधर इस पॉसिबिलिटी की वो वहां पर सर्वाइव करने में सक्सेसफुल ना हो सके बट एट सेम टाइम वहां पर प्रोडेक्टर्स हो सकते हैं जो कि स्पीशी को एलिमिनेट ही कर दें और उसको ग्रो करने के चांसेस जो है वो इतने हाई ना हो बट इन अदर केस इट वुड भी वेरी फेवरेबल एट द सेम टाइम सो दिशन वुड भी रिवर्स ये भी एक पॉसिबिलिटी है कि उस इन्वेस्टिड स्पीशी या उस एक्जॉटिक स्पीशी को कम्पीट करने के लिए कोई स्ट्रॉग स्पीशी ने हैबिटेट में अवेलेबल ही ना हो हो सकता है कि उसके प्रेडेटर्स ही वहां मौजूद ना हो तो इस तरह की सिचुएशन में उस स्पीशी के ऊपर नेगेटिव प्रेशर जो है वो रिड्यूस होना शुरू हो जाएगा एंड रिजल्टली दट स्पीशी विल आउट कम्पीट द नेटिव स्पीशीज ऑफ द न्यू हैबिटेट एंड इट वुड एस्टेब्लिश इट सेल्फ इट वुड फ्लरिश रेपडली एंड इन दट केस वन इट इज आउट कम्पीटिंग विद नेटिव स्पीशी इट इज डिफाइंड एज इन्वेसिव स्पीशी Invasive species uh, could be anything. Um, they could be animals, they could be plants, and they could be pathogens. So, uh, three no forms ke under hi they uh, cause an imbalance in the natural environment because of their invasion. और उसकी रीजन जो है वो यही है कि वहाँ की नेटिव स्पीशीज के लिए जो रिसोर्स अवेलेबल हैं उनको विग्रसली यूटिलाइज करते हैं जिसका रिजल्ट ये निकलता है कि नेटिव स्पीशीज फ्लरिश करने में या अपनी इकोलॉजिकल रेंज को एक्सपैंड करने में फेल होना शुरू हो जाती है और उनकी जगह इन्वेस्टिव स्पीशी लेना शुरू कर देती है एंड दट्स हाउ वहाँ पर डोमिनेट कर जाती है अब हम कुछ एग्जाम्पल्स डिस्कस करते हैं इन्वेस्टिव स्पीशी की वन एग्जाम्पल इज जीब्रा मसल जिस वन एग्जाम्पल सेवरल एग्जाम्पल ऑफ invasion of species but we will discuss a couple of them so zebra mussels they uh, originally they belong to the caspian and black sea so these are aquatic animals here we can uh, see these zebra mussels it is a small uh, animal which is attached to the body of uh, the other animals in a new habitat so it was accidentally introduced uh, to the great lakes in 1988 the ships ki uh, wooden surface jo thi uske sath attach hokar ek jagah se ye dusri jagah pe pahunchna shuru ho gaye aur unme se uh, the one place was the great lakes once they reached the great lakes wahan par inhe compete karne ke liye koi bhi aur species itni strong maujood nahi thi so certainly they take the control of that habitat they start growing reproducing they start over consuming over exploiting the food resources other resources for example shelter and out competed with the native species so they harm other uh, species of freshwater mussels um, they can even block the intake pipes of the power plants what in that sea and they can cause problems in recreational activities as well kudzu is another example of a invasive plant species so uh, it is native to the japan and it, will, it was introduced to uh, usa just as something which is rapidly growing because if you go to have the even ki ye ek foot ek din ke andar jo hai wo grow kar jati hai so because they were impressed ki ye bahut ek greenery aur ek forestation aa jayegi itni zyada jagah bahut quickly green hoti hai so they introduced kudzu in usa and now what happened uh, now it is considered as a noxious weed because ye itni rapid growth ki wajah se us pure area ko us pure habitat ko quickly take over kar leti hai even ke uh, larger trees electric poles koi bhi aisi cheez chahe wo houses hain unko bahut rapidly jo hai usko wrap up kar deti hai it results in shading so once all the plants all the trees they are covered by a thick layer of kudzu they can't get sunlight um, easily because there is no penetration of light so resultantly uh, native species which are wrapped up by the kudzu they would die Asian tiger mosquito is another example
इसको इंट्रोड्यूस करवाया गया यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स में रिक्रिएशनल एंड अक्वेरियम ऑर्नामेंटल फिश बिकॉज इट लुक्स वेरी ब्यूटीफुल एज वी सी इन दिस इमेज तो अक्वेरियम में रखने के लिए एज एन ऑर्नामेंटल फिश इट वॉज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड एंड इट स्केप्ड फ्रॉम कैप्टिविटी और इसने फिर वहां का जनरल हैबिटेट था दट वॉज टेकन ओवर बाय द लाइन फिश एंड दिस लाइन फिश इज डेंजरस फॉर द नेटिव स्पीशीज बिकॉज इट इज वेरी विगरस कार्निवोरस इट इज एग्रेसिव फिश तो ये लोकल फिश जो है उन पर वरेशियसली फीड करती है एंड रिजल्टेंटली द पॉपुलेशन साइज वॉज रिड्यूस्ड एंड अदर डेंजर इज फॉर दोज पीपल हुआ स्विमिंग इन द वॉटर बिकॉज दीज फिश दे हैव स्पाइन सो मेरी पीपल आर स्टांग बाई देर स्पाइन So we have seen that invasion of a species is not suitable. It is not favorable for um, those species which are present in the new habitat. So uh, therefore, before introducing any species, there should be a proper check. Uh, governments जो हैं उनको एक किसी एक proper legislation को strategies को follow करना चाहिए. There should be proper laws and proper law enforcement. जैसे कि मुख्य developed countries like Australia and USA, they have very strict rules for introducing species in uh, in their country. Uh, so बाकी countries जो हैं वहाँ पर भी ऐसी strict legislation होनी चाहिए कि आप किसी और species को um, उसका पूरी एक feasibility prepare के बगैर उसको किसी दूसरे habitat में transfer नहीं कर सकते. Because it would imbalance that habitat and it would disturb the food web completely. Which is not good for For all those species which are present in that habitat. So friends, our video will be complete. We will see you next time. Let's go to the reading. struggles to increase its habitat in order to grow and increase its population colonization is a natural process by which a species expands its geographic range it can not it can occur in many ways plants disperse their seeds by many animal species beyond their current habitat land animals move to new islands when sea levels are lower the when sea levels are lower thus enabling them to move from one land mass to another which otherwise which otherwise are isolated and aquatic animals move between water water bodies in the times of floods when animals migrate the carry uh, when animals migrate they carry other animals either in by homes or parasites with them to new newer habitats humans usually introduce such exotic species into new habitats when a species enters zone introduced by humans in a new habitat it immediately faces the competition with the native species and has to face two possibilities either perish if can't compete compete with the native or to survive and uh, out perform at the expense expense of the native species when an uh, introduced species outperforms the native inhabitants then it is called as invasive species invasive species can be either uh, either animals animals plants or pathogens and their introduction in any habitat results in an imbalance in the ecosystem zebra mussel is an example of invasive species it belongs to caspi Caspine and uh, Black Sea, and was introduced into a uh, Great Lakes in 1988. Being an invasive species, zebra mussel is capa- capable of harming other freshwater mussels. It can block water pipes and other problems in the recreational activities. Similarly, kudzu kudzu is a plant. invasive species native to japan and southeast east china it was introduced in usa for its rapid growth however it is now considered as noxious a uh, weed that climbs over everything from trees to shrubs to electricity poles etc it kills or other plants species by it kills other plants species by blocking their sunlight Asian uh, tiger mosquito uh, is another such example of invasive species it was introduced in hawaii in late 1800s and in continental uh, usa in, in 1985 it can be vector for difference for different diseases that is west nile virus lion fish is also an invasive species native to pacific ocean it was introduced in usa by aquarium trade in uh, 1992 it preys on native species and has poisonous uh, poisonous spines in order to avoid introduction of invasive species strategies and legislations 
are needed to be implemented the aim of these strategies must be protection of native species and conservation of native biodiversity in this lesson the students will learn about colonization in native species okay ab hum iski duties ki taraf chalte hain
ओवर एक्सप्लाइटेशन इज एन अदर प्रॉब्लम विच इज फेस बाय अ बैलेंस्ड हैबिटेट और अ बैलेंस्ड एनवायरमेंट Uh, over exploitation means over harvesting of resources so uh, harvesting those resources which are renewable and uh, in, uh, consuming them to the point when they start diminishing so that stage or that process is called as over harvesting over exploitation so is overall ye ke jitne bhi available resources hain kuch aise species which are stronger uh, as compared to their their competing species ye over consume kar leti hain over exploit kar leti hain wahan par jo resources available hote hain that could be food it could be shelter so um, that over exploitation would disturb the food web because uh, we know ke kisi bhi habitat mein kisi bhi environment ke andar sari species uh, wahan par available resources ko uh, evenly equally ya kisi priority ke sath utilize kar rahi hoti hain so there is risk of extinction which appears uh, even the species is present in abundance initially but if one species is over consuming over exploiting the resources to wo species jo ki abundance mein bhi hain unke liye bhi ye ek risk generate ho jata hai ki wo apni point of extinction tak pahunch jayenge um, inki kuch examples hain for example um, uh, passenger pigeons which have been observed in north america iske alawa there were the herds or flocks of bisons uh, are the large mammals uh, many years ago they there, there was like really abundant uh, populations of those uh, birds and mammals in north america but once um, human in, uh, colonization hoti hai wahan par aur uh, european nations jaakar uh, north america ko inhabit karna shuru karti hain so they over exploited these two species in that area so resultantly ab pigeon uh, or uh, bison ki hardly ek smaller size ki jo populations hain wo in areas mein nazar aati hain so um one important factor in over exploitation is removal of apex predator in in the specific relationship your food web or food chain may we have studied uh, trophic levels may uh, the topmost level of uh, a food chain is apex predator and that apex predator is very important to maintain the balance in the lower trophic levels so agar apex predator ko kisi bhi habitat mein um, extinction ke point tak pahuncha diya jayega to iska result ye nikalta hai ki wo prey jisko wo feed kar raha hai uh, us prey ki population jo hogi wo bahut uh, rapidly grow karna shuru kar deta hai because uske upar se predation pressure jo hai wo remove ho gaya and this unchecked uh, increase in that prey population it would over exploit the resources of that prey फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर हम लाइन को एलिमिनेट कर दें और उसके रिजल्ट ये होगा कि वहाँ पर डियर की पॉपुलेशन जो है वो रैपिडली ग्रो करना शुरू कर देती है एंड इफ डियर पॉपुलेशन इज इंक्रीजिंग दे विल ओवर ग्रेज द ग्रास इन दैट हैबिटेट सो दिस इज द इम्बैलेंस इन द फूड चेन सो रिजल्ट विल बी शॉर्टेज ऑफ फूड इन दैट हैबिटेट because if deer is overgrazing the grass there are many other species which are feeding on the grass as well resultantly unki food resources jo hai wo um, reduce hona shuru ho jate hain aur agar wo population smaller size mein hai to unki elimination aur extinction ka risk jo hai as compared to large species a large uh, species uh, population of species it would be very high Uh, the other um, example of um, uh, this this kind of relationship um, is the removal of apex predator in the form of uh, sperm whales uh, which has been very common whaling jo hai wo kisi ek ek stage pe uh, jithi wo bahut common thi polar regions mein jahan pe whales they were hunted for their meat and for their fats so this removal of uh, apex predator this uh, or isse jo impact generate hota hai ek food chain ke upar this is called as cascade effect and this cascade of uh, over exploitation at different level it would uh, population number ya population size jo hai that would start dwindling and this dwindling in the population size it might lead to extinction of those species So in this video we study um, the how a uh, apex predator in the for, this example jo hai wo sperm whale hai uh, uski elimination se ek food chain uh, pe ek cascade effect jo hai wo generate hota hai so let's watch this video एलिमिनेशन से वी आर मूविंग द एपेक्स प्रेडेटर और रिजल्टेंटली वो सारे वो बैलेंसिंग इंपैक्ट जो कि स्पॉम वेल जनरेट कर रही है अपने हैबिटेट में इट वुड बी ट्रांसफॉर्म इन टू इम्बैलेंस वो सारी स्पीशीज जिनको कि स्पॉम वेल कंज्यूम करिए उनका पॉपुलेशन साइज है वो रैपिडली ग्रो करना शुरू हो जाता है और ये पूरे जो नीचे तक ये कैस्केट जो है वो लोअर ट्रॉपिक लेवल्स पर भी ट्रांसफर होता है ओवर एक्सप्लाइटेशन के लिए अगेन जो फैक्टर रिस्पॉसिबल है दट इज ह्यूमन एक्टिविटी सो द ह्यूमन दे आर ओवर एक्सप्लाइटिंग डिफरेंट स्पीशीज इन द एनवायरमेंट एंड दे आर डिफरेंट रीजन बिहाइंड दिस ओवर एक्सप्लाइटेशन सो मोस्टली दे आर कमर्शियल मोटिवेशन टू इंक्रीज देर टू इंप्रूव देर इकॉनमी टू इंक्रीज देर इनकम वट दे डू मोटिवेशन इज इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड एंड दिस इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड वुड बी ऑफ डिफर आइटम्स वी आर फमिलियर विद विद फर्स बहुत से ऐसे एनिमल्स हैं विच आर फिल्ड बिकॉज दे हैव वेरी नाइस पर जिसको यूटिलाइज किया जाता है टू प्रपेयर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ड्रेसेज एंड क्लोदिंग स्किन ऑफ एनिमल कुछ ऐसी स्पीशीज है जिनके स्किन इट इज यूज टू प्रपेयर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट वुड भी जैकेट्स इट वुड भी डिफरेंट पर्सेज या वॉलेट्स हैं उनकी प्रेपरेशन की जाती है उसकी मैनुफेक्चरिंग होती है बोन्स आर यूज बाय डिफरेंट ट्रेडेटर ट्रेडर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल उसमें एलिफेंट टस्क हो सकता है उसमें डिफरेंट एनिमल्स की बोन्स हैं जिसमें राइनों का हॉर्न है दट इज वन एक्जाम्पल उसमें कुछ टाइगर की स्पीशीज हैं जिनके क्लॉज यूज होते हैं तो दीज बोन्स आर आर सोल्ड फॉर डिफरेंट पर्पज इट वुड भी ऑर्नमेंटल पर्पज एंड इट वुड भी मेडिसिनल पर्पज इसके अलावा कुछ और भी ऐसे बॉडी पार्ट्स हैं जो कि उस ऑर्गेजन की बॉडी में से रिमूव होते हैं फॉर एक्जाम्पल मस्क डियर का जो मस्क ग्लैंड है इट इज रिमूव फॉर प्रेपरेशन ऑफ मस्क फ्रेगरेंस 
एंड देन देर इज ट्रॉफी हंडिंग एंड देन देर इज गेम हंडिंग मार्को की एक्सटिंगशन से जो कि ऑलमोस्ट इसकी एक्सटिंगशन होते होते जो है वो बचाली गई है विद हेल्प ऑफ डब्ल्यू एफ एंड कंजर्वेशन एजेंसी इन पाकिस्तान वी नो कि मार्को हंडिंग इसकी रिजल्ट में मार्को की जो पॉपुलेशन थी दट वॉज थ्रेट एंड नाउ दर लिविंग इन द कंजर्वेशन और द वाइल्ड पार्क हंडिंग फॉर द फूड इज अदर रीजन अगर हम इनको ओवर एक्सप्लाइट करें फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ देर मीट इट वुड भी ओवर एक्सप्लाइटेशन मेडिसन इज एन अदर एस्पेक्ट जिसमें डिफरेंट पार्ट जो है एनिमल्स के और प्लांट्स के भी वो यूज होते हैं टू प्रपेयर डिफरेंट मेडिसन तो रिजल्टली इट वुड कॉज देर ओवर एक्सप्लाइटेशन बाई ह्यूमस इनकी कुछ एग्जाम्पल्स हैं कि ओवर एक्सपेक्टेशन का रिजल्ट ये निकला कि कुछ बहुत सी स्पीशीज ऐसी हैं हमारे पूरे वर्ल्ड के अंदर जो कि अपनी थ्रेटेंड लेवल को टारगेट कर चुकी है फॉर एग्जाम्पल देर इज चिंचला देर इज वकूना होटल एंड डिफरेंट कैट स्पीशीज आर किल्ड फॉर देर फर ऑल दो देर इज एन अवेयरनेस और ऐसी प्रोडक्ट्स जिसमें एक ओरिजिनल एनिमल स्किन या फर यूज होती है इट इज बिंग बैंड ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड बट स्टिल इलीगल ट्रेड जो है वो कंटिन्यू है एलिफेंट्स आर किल्ड फॉर देर टास्क इनकी भी इलीगल हंडिंग दट इज बैंड मोस्ट इन अफ्रीकन कंट्रीज बट पीपल दे आर डूंग इट कोड ब्लू फिन ट्यूना एंड सोट फिश फिशिंग इन नॉर्थ अमेरिका देर ओवर एक्सपाइड ओवर फिश और रिजल्टेंटली ये तीनों स्पीशीज जो है नॉर्थ अमेरिका में थ्रेट लेवल तक पहुंच गई सिमिलरली वेस्टर्न वेस्टर्न डीज में मोहगनी इज ट्री स्पीशी ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड ट्री एंड दिस ट्री इज ओवर ओवर कट या इसकी जो है वो डिफॉरेस्टेशन इसकी फॉरेस्ट की हो रही है बिकॉज इट इज यूज टू प्रपेयर फर्नीचर सिमिलरली सेटर फॉरेस्ट ऑफ लेबनॉन इज अदर एग्जाम्पल के डिफेंट प्रोडक्ट्स को वुड प्रोडक्ट्स को फर्नीचर की प्रेपरेशन के लिए ब्लाइंडली इन दफ्तों को काटा गया और इनकी जो एक री फॉरेस्ट्रेशन थी उस पर कोई भी तवज्जो नहीं दी गई तो इस तरह से ये स्पीशीज विच आर ओनली जस्ट फ्यू इन लार्ज लिस्ट द रीच इन टू द लेवल ऑफ थ्रेट स्पीशीज बिकॉज ऑफ ओवर एक्सपाइटेशन
वजह से हमारी पीपीटी का सोल्यूट होगा फिर हम इसको पढ़ते हैं ठीक है फिर ये बहुत अच्छे समझ आ गया टॉपिक आई होप आप 